All right, behind me, we have our 97 Astro van. We're going to take it on a road trip, so we're going to do a couple things. We're going to do uh, idler arms, we're going to do front brakes, we're going to do rear shocks, and we're going to do rear drum brakes. So we're going to do the whole system, and I'm going to kind of walk you through it step by step, show you how to do the entire system. Um, it's probably be, I don't probably be three videos. We might make it three or four videos just to split it up. But this will be my introduction for all the videos. So uh, hopefully you guys enjoy. And this is a video you need to learn some stuff on. So, all right. Okay, now we're going to take this dust cap off. I just use a standard screwdriver, a little tiny hammer. Got a cotter pin in here. And I just use some standard wire clines. Just twist that up. And you've got a big nut. Break that loose. And I will put this nut back on. To remove the rear seal, and I'll show you how to do that in just a second here. So get it to where it's almost off, break it loose, pull your bearing out. Then I will take this nut, put it back on. Hopefully you can hear me over the air compressor. Just get it on a couple threads, and this is what I actually use to remove the rear seal. So just to make sure it's threaded on, pull your drum, your rotor back to where it's catching on that and pull it. You got to make sure that it catches right here then that way you can get that rear seal off and the rear. Okay, I'm going to show you guys a little trick that I learned when I was a kid and uh, they actually make a machine nowadays that you know packs these bearings for you but um, what I was, what I learned when I was a kid, I mean, I was, I don't know, 20 years ago when I was 12 or 13, uh, I worked for a guy who uh, ran a carpet cleaning business, and he showed me how to pack these bearings, and uh, even some of the dealerships do it this way too. So what you want to do is, you just want to clean off all the old grease. Um, you can soak these in gasoline. Um, I don't recommend it just because gasoline's a little abrasive, but just try to get all of the the old grease off the best that you can and then what I like to do is always start with the inside one first and I just use some basic wheel bearing grease I mean get that at any auto parts store and then I just put this in the palm of my hand like this and I'll try to come up to the camera so you can see and just use the palm of your hand as the actual uh, so it gets up into the bearing laces which is what I like to call the laces. And you'll actually see it as it starts to come through the bearings. You'll see it start to roll through the other side. And then that's how you kind of flush out all the old grease that's in there and you bring new grease in. I mean, there is a machine that you can purchase that you just set this down and you know squeeze it in but this is kind of old school way. It's really messy. And if you use gloves, it's a lot easier to not get your hands all jacked up. But, you know, I don't, I don't mind playing with grease. I'm the kind of guy that doesn't mind getting dirty. But if you put gloves on, some rubber latex gloves, you know, it'll be a lot less messy. But, and you can kind of see, I'll try to get it on the camera so you can see, you can see how it's kind of bleeding up through, through the bearing. You can see kind of the dirtier grease and the new grease is coming up from the underside. And just basically do that until you start seeing, you know, the redder grease coming up through. Then that way you know you're getting the new grease and you flushed out the old grease. You know, kind of a, a backyard way to do it, but it works. And then I just like to kind of roll it around a little bit just to try to get some of that old stuff out. And now I'm going to show you how to install this 
this inner bearing. Uh, this goes on the inside of the hub. And the two things that you need are your seal and basically your, your new bearing. Um, the best thing that I found to do is, um, let me grab a, just a little bit of grease. Since we've repacked the bearing, uh, really all you need to do is just put a little bit of new wheel bearing grease on the inside and just kind of a, a thin layer. It doesn't have to be a lot, but I will put just enough in there that my new bearing, well this is actually my old bearing, the old one uh, it works just fine, it doesn't, it's not froze up and it's, there's no problems with it so I'm going to just use that one. And then make sure you put it down face down. Then you've got your seal. You want to look at your seal, make sure that it doesn't have any dings or dents or anything like that because this does rest right on the spindle. And sometimes dirt can get up there or rock and can kind of bend these things. So if you need to replace it, I suggest to do it now before you put it back together. But this one's okay. So just go ahead, um, line that up. Now I'm just going to use a little hammer because these things will bend real easy. And they don't have to go in too far, a sixteenth of an inch, and that's that's about it. You can tell when it's all the way in. And we'll take this over to the car and install it. All right, now we're going to put this other bearing in, and uh, I've already greased it, so it's ready to go. And what we're going to do is just put some grease on the inside. Hold your rotor so it doesn't fall off. Let's put some little grease on there. Now this side you want to use a little bit more just because it does have a lot of pressure on this side. Then we're going to take our bearing, slide it in, make sure the drum, the rotor is all the way back and then just kind of wiggle this in place and just give it a little bit of a spin. Then we're going to take our thrust plate and we're going to put that on its notch so it only goes on one way. Then we're going to take our little nut and all this is just done by hand. You don't need any tools. And you'll see what I mean here in just a couple minutes. Once you get this all the way on, I'll use my pliers just to do a quarter turn. But you don't want it to spin more than you know two revolutions. You want it snug, but you don't want it too tight. So that right there is, is plenty tight. Now I always like to spin it back and forth a couple times just so that that grease can seat inside the bearings and uh, you know make sure that it doesn't wobble loose and uh, that's pretty much about all you have to do then we'll take as long as this thing does a complete revolution it's fine some people will say half a revolution a complete revolution is fine for me and then you just take your cotter pin and find out where it needs to be because this is notched out I'll take some of the grease out so hopefully you can see and then you just line up your hole wherever you need to to get that cotter pin in there. And sometimes you have to back it off a little bit, but that's pretty much all you have to do. Um, it's a good idea, it's kind of going back here, backwards here a little bit. It's a good idea to kind of see where your hole is because sometimes they're in different spots. Each car has a little different. So see the holes right here. I was trying to put it in here. So just decide where your adjustment needs to be. Now we know that that hole in the spindle is right there. So we want to make sure we snug it like it needs to be. And then we'll put our cotter pin in. And then you just bend that up and that is completely done. That's all there is to it. It's adjusted. It's ready to go. Uh, we're going to go ahead and show you how to do the brake system now.